Uh, hello, Pranav from the Scorecrow. How excited were you guys when you got the, the phone call from the Clippers that they were gonna, saying that they were going to draft you guys? Um, yeah, so um, I, was, I was picked, and then um, when I got picked and go through the whole media circuit, uh, I was talking to L, and he said, you know, your man Terrence is on the board still. And I said, yeah, it was going to be crazy. He's like, how crazy would it be if you were to play with him? And I said, it'd be insane. But at that time, the picks were still going through. And as I was going through the whole media circuit, I was, walk I was walking to TVs. And when the Clippers were up and they picked Terrence Mann, I was ecstatic. So it was, ex it was insane to kind of see that me and him being in college and then on the same team now. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I didn't know that he, would, he got picked by the Clippers because it was a Br Brooklyn Nets pick. But when I heard I was getting picked, I was extremely excited, you know, to be able to, you know, stay in the sun because I was in Florida and now I'm in Cali. So I was excited for that <laughs> part. Um, but, you know, and the team that they had going on the playoff run and all of that. So, you know, I was just extremely excited for me, myself and my family. Charles, oh, there we go. <laughs> Charles Mockler locked on Clippers. Uh, Terrence, during the playbook event, Jerry West mentioned he was really excited to see you play this year. What's it mean to have a player and executive of his stature be excited to see you play? Uh, it means everything, you know, you know, just who he is, who he is, um, him being able to acknowledge my game um, and what I bring to the table means a lot to me. Um, I talk to him, you know, often every time he comes to the gym, just give me little pointers. Uh, stuff that I need to do to get better. So it's just amazing to have a guy like that around. Yovan Buha, The Athletic. Uh, you guys are both still rookies, haven't even played in a preseason game yet, but you've been around the team now for a greater part of a month. Uh, what have you picked up over these last few weeks from, from the runs and just being fishing trip, all that different stuff? Um, I, I mean, I picked up a lot. Um, I see that we're a very mature team. Um, we got a lot of vets, um, you know, guys who've been different places, so they're always giving us different pointers. Um, you know, but we have great chemistry um, so far. You know, we are, we're always doing stuff together, um, always talking about winning things and stuff like that. So, you know, just being around for a month, I see everybody, you know, is kind of connected, and a lot of guys that know what they're doing. Uh, myself, personally, I recognize that these guys are very wise. You know, everything we do is very efficient. There's not a lot of dead time. They want to save as much energy as possible and do things the right way. Just talking to them on, you know, private conversations, being around them in the locker room, you know, they have, they're very insightful. They've seen a lot in the, throughout the league. They've, everyone had a, a different journey to get to where they are now. So it's been kind of cool to see the different paths. So just picking up on those little things and practice habits and building a routine, just learning from them. So it's been really great. Uh, Josh Martin from Close Up 360. This is for both of you. Uh, who are your respective vets, and have they assigned you any rookie duties yet? Um, so our vets basically have been all the older guys like Pat, Mo, Lou, and um, you know one of the small things you have to do is you know get the towels, make sure everybody get towels. Uh, you know if you're on the training table, you gotta get and they gotta get stressed too. You gotta get off. So just a little bit of a hierarchy. You know ain't nothing to it. You know it's nothing too crazy. So that's pretty much it for me. Same, you know, towels, mainly towels. You know, we haven't hit training camp yet, but we have to do a lot of, a lot of other stuff, but a lot of towels, <laughs> a lot of towels. Hey, Farbo to Nishari Forbes. Uh, last season, we saw Jerome get his car popcorn for not following his rookie duties. Did he give you guys any kind of tips or pointers on being a rookie on this team? Yeah, just whatever they say, just do it. Like, just do it. Don't think about it. If they say get a specific thing, just do it. No questions asked and bring it to them on time. Not earlier, not late, on a specific time. Yeah, I don't plan, I don't plan on getting, you know, popcorn this year. Um, but, you know, what he said, you know, just do it and don't ask questions. What are, what are you guys looking forward to the most about playing your first year in the NBA? Terrence, you want to start? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to learning a lot. Um, I'm really excited with the, the team that, you know, that I'm on just because, like I said, there's so many older guys. So I'm really excited to learn, you know, to help me in my career, you know, because they all been through so much and they all come from different paths. So just being able to learn from guys like that is what I'm most excited about and to win. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm, I'm curious. I'm excited just carving my niche in the league, you know, with, with the, so many talented guys on our team and just finding my role and just learning from Doc. I'm just super excited to, you know, have my learning curve, my learning bumps throughout the season and kind of finding my role and kind of honing that. And as the season progresses, just kind of owning it and you know excelling in that role. Uh, Tomer Zarley from Clutch Points. Uh, 
What's been told to you guys about staying ready every night? Because there's nights where you know injuries could happen, guys could sit out due to rest. What have you guys been told about staying ready every night? And is that something you have to prepare for mentally more than physically? Um, I, I would say it's both. It's a nice happy medium in between. You just really gotta, you know, even if you're not playing, you know, you gotta be on that court early, get in, get your workout in before the games, get a good game rep workout so that your your wind is ready. You know, you're in great shape, great stamina just in case your number does get called. And then it's definitely a mental thing, you know, because, um, you know, a lot of people go from playing a lot from where they came from to sometimes not playing very much. And they, you know, they've never been through something like that. So it's definitely a big time mental thing. Um, but like I said, being able to have vets like this where, you know, some of them have been through that, you can ask them how they got through it and, you know, learn from that. Um, for me personally, I feel like it's mental. I mean, the coaching staff do a great job preparing you physically, you know, whether it be drills, conditioning, lifting weights. So you're obligated, they're gonna take care of that, but the stuff on your own, your own responsibility is mentally, you know, every game you gotta act like, okay, I gotta be ready if my name is called. And that's the mental challenge by yourself. No coach or player can really kind of do that other than yourself, because everyone else just kind of takes care of everything else. So if you just focus on mentally preparing yourself, acting as if you're ready to play, even if your name is not called, and if it is, just be ready. So that's the kind of the challenges that I'm gonna face, just being mentally ready all the time. Hey guys, I'm Miriam Swanson, Southern California News Group. Um, so you guys both went and played in summer league and, and did pretty well there. Um, what did you learn there and what did sort of that experience do for you and your confidence? Um, I learned a lot. Um, the spacing of the floor or the pace of the game, even though it's not to the degree of NBA and NBA season, especially even in the playoffs, it's good to get a little taste of it just because, you know, guys, it's, it's much different in college. The offenses are different, you know, different roles. So to be a part of that and have a, a decent summer league with my teammate. It's, it was really fun to you know, build that more chemistry because in college, we ran different offenses in the NBA. We ran something differently. So it was kind of cool to get that gel. Uh, for me, I learned a whole new position. Um, <laughs> I came from playing you know, on the wing most of the time uh, to summer league, having the ball in my hands, having to run the team, uh, know guys' tendencies on my team, know where they like the ball, know what they do. So it was just a, a, lot, a lot of learning um, also in summer league. So, you know, that's what I really had to take in, just kind of finding, you know, what I do best and, you know, excelling at, at that position. Hi, Amanda Skurlock, LA Sentinel. I'm wondering, like, could you tell me your observations of the Clippers run in the playoffs slash this past season, and what did you guys learn from that? Um, those guys are very gritty and tenacious because, you know, watching that player from when I was in college, just seeing those guys, you know, they faced Golden State in that first round when they were the healthiest they ever been, and they competed really well. And just to see that kind of grit and toughness from Doc all the way down, it just really inspired me because, you know, although they weren't maybe as talented at the time, they still, you know, they still stepped to the challenge. And now that we have more pieces now, it just gives me more confidence going to the regular season and into the playoffs. Yeah, for me, I just like how they play with toughness. Um, you know, the toughness really stood out, kind of had everybody talking about it. You know, across the world, who was watching um, how tough they played them, um, you know, and they you, they didn't back down, and they knew that people thought they had less talent, and they knew the team that they were facing, but um, you could tell that they were playing with confidence, and you could see when the team believes in themselves, it shows, and you know that's what I saw. What's the best piece of advice either of you have been given on surviving your first year in the NBA, whether it's being ready to play on any given night when your number is called, or just the challenges and obstacles that might present themselves along the way? Um, for me, um, I got some good advice from Jerome. Uh, he told me take it day by day, you know, don't think too far ahead. Don't think about yesterday. Just try to get better every day that you're there. Um, you know, always do something to try and get better every day. Um, and then it'll stack up and, you know, add up. Um, for me personally, a lot of the vets told me to create a routine because the NBA season is so chaotic and it's so sometimes up and down to, to find, to kind of own that something that's consistent. It's something to find, whether it be a shooting routine, a diet, or whatever. Create that routine just so you have something consistent in your life, especially in a chaotic NBA season. Any other questions? Um, it's great, you know. I'm always gonna have somebody to talk to when I'm struggling or vice versa, so whenever you know, a challenge to present themselves. If you need someone to talk to, we're kind of doing the same thing together. You know, when I, when I was in college, I was a freshman. He was an upperclassman. He showed me the ropes. So now it's, you know, we're kind of doing it at the same time. And now 
you know, we can have those kind of conversations because we're both going through the same thing. Yeah, I would say it's a lot easier to, to transition with somebody that you're familiar with. Um, you know, just being able to talk to other rookies from other teams, they don't have it how we have it. Um, you know, we've known each other for a long time. Uh, we were one of each other's favorite teammates in college. So, you know, we, we know what each other wants, what, they, what our needs are, what our goals are, and stuff like that. So it's a lot easier to transition in with that. Are you guys rooming together? No, we're not. No, no, no. We live close, though. <laughs> no, we're very close. We need yeah, that space. I, I can't live with him. But come on. Yeah. Why is he, is he messy? <laughs> no, nah, he's not messy. We've just been together for so long, you know. It's time you need to a little space. Yeah, I'll see him when we walk through these doors. Yeah. <laughs> Question over here? Anyone else? What about the advice that the, the veterans on the team have told you in terms of playing for Doc and what kind of coach he is? Um, yeah, they, one of the things I did appreciate was Doc doesn't really, he does care about offense, but, you know, make a mistake on offense. He's not really, you know, adamant on that. It's mostly on the defensive end. If you lack on defense, mess up on the coverage, that's when Doc kind of turns up a little bit. So you get that freedom on offense, but you have to bring it back to him on defense. So that's something I appreciate because Coach Ham back in college had the same similar philosophy. Uh, for me, just playing point guard now, just be the turnovers. You know, the vets told me, you know, he doesn't like turnovers. I don't think any coach does, but, um, you know, just being able to, you know, watch that and not turn the ball over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody likes turnovers. Anyone else here? Miriam? But, like, as a kid, were you? Yeah, so growing up, I always played point guard on my teams. Um, uh, high school, senior year, I played point guard. Um, and then in college, my freshman year of college, I played the four. So it was a big, big difference. But, you know, I was just on the team at the time trying to do whatever it took for my team to win. I didn't really care so much. Um, and then I didn't play point guard all through college up until, like, the end of my senior year. I would play a little bit of point guard uh, here and there. So, you know, not much in college for the past few years. but. When I, when I got in summer league, it just came back naturally. Um, and, you know, even when we've been playing here, so it's a lot of fun. Tom Mary's Arley from Clutch Points. I'm curious, what, when that moment sinks into you guys, you know, in the NBA, and then, uh, for example, like 2K, are you guys big 2K players? When you see yourselves in the game, what's that moment like for you? For me, it was crazy just because I grew up playing, you know, 2K and NBA Live and all that stuff. And, and you know, it was, always, it was always a dream of mine, but I really didn't, you know, think it would really come true. Um, but, you know, just this is crazy to see me in, in video game form. Uh, they have everything perfect, you know, tattoos, hair. They didn't give me a haircut, though, so it was kind of messed up. But it, it was amazing to see. It was nice just seeing myself. I look good. I like it. My, my, my rating is pretty good. I'm, I'm going to get it up. But I appreciate it. You know, you play games. You make them my career. You kind of visualize yourself kind of going through it. And now that you're actually in the game and, you know, I'm, I'm passing the ball to Kawhi and I'm, I'm really going to pass the ball to Kawhi in real life. So <laughs> it's pretty dope. Uh, since you guys know each other so well and since you're, you're new in this market, what is one thing that you could, a little known fact about each other that you can tell me, Terrence, about Fee and vice versa? Uh, well, for Fee, I just know that when I'm around him, he likes to listen to music a lot. What kind and, of music? Uh, he likes a lot of rap. A lot of he listens to Gunna probably. Well, Fee is interesting. Let me tell you a little story about Fee. He'll he'll get songs and he'll look up the lyrics and read them and learn them. So he knows like every lyric to every song that he likes and he listens to it to over and over and over. So I had to get used to that, like of him coming in the room playing the same song again. I'm like, yo. <laughs> so I'm used to it now. So I just you know listen to it with him, act like I like it with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get him all happy, but. No, nah, um, we, we like the same music, though, but, you know, that's one thing about him. He likes to listen to music all the time. Like, no matter what we're doing, he has to turn on his phone, play music, and I had to get used to that. Um, but now I'm used to it, so that's a good f fact about Fee. Uh, fun fact about Terrence, you know, the same way I am with lyrics, the same thing about food. You know, we go at the restaurants. He's very loyal to Chipotle. You know, since he's been to California, we've been going to Rio Cafe, so he's a big fan of that. So same topping, same everything, so... That's, that's him. You know, the Clippers have a whole staff who are going to help you eat better than Chipotle. Yeah. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard. Everybody's on me about it. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Oh, yeah, go ahead. How are you guys doing today? Welcome to 
Los Angeles. Right. <laughs> uh, I had a question piggybacking on the regimen. You mentioned about the daily regimen. They always say a daily, daily routine gets you to your dreams. So regarding your routines with your eating, speaking of food, um, do you guys see the importance of that? And have you, I know you like the Rio place, but have you tried the new nutritional way and see how it makes you feel? Um, yeah. Um, you know, recently, you know, our nutritionist has been really great, giving us so many good options, especially when we leave the facility. And, you know, just certain foods that she tells us, you know, she does, you know, people just tell you the certain foods and nutritions, but I appreciate that because they tell us, you know, the effects that it has on the court specifically, because that's what it comes down to, you know, how slow you feel, the sluggish recovery time, you know, and the foods that help with that and don't. So they've been really great since I've been here about, you know, presenting those kind of things to me. Yeah, I mean, Fee and I are pretty good about eating healthy, though. Um, you know, for the most part, we're really good about it. I think we started in college, like last year, we started about doing that. Um, our whole team really started it. Um, but yeah, that's just, that's just what, what we do. You know, we've always been kind of into eating healthy food and stuff like that. So we're going to bring it with us here, I hope. <laughs> but, and LA is really like friendly for eating healthy, so it's, it's easy. <laughs>